Well, before we talk about the game, this is Ronnie James. He just want to say a few words before he uh, gets released. Um, I just want to say I'm thankful uh, for everything. Um, Mayo Clinic, everything they helped me with. My parents, siblings, for supporting me through this this hard time in my life. Um, yeah, I just, I just, I just want to give appreciation to everyone that's helped me through this. Yeah. Also, also my coach, my teammates, all my other coaches, they've been with me since the since the start. And yeah, I just want to, I just want to say I'm thanks, I'm thankful for them. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Is Ronnie taking any questions? He's not going to take any questions, but uh, thank you, Coach. Um, Coach, just yeah. when you look at the second half, what did you see early on that allowed Long Beach State to kind of close up some of that? Well, we had a 15 point lead at halftime. I was disappointed in our energy when we started the second half. Our starting unit came out, and we missed some wide open shots to start. They were flat on defense, and uh, they just had more energy to start the second half. I didn't understand it because we had a great crowd. and. We played so energetic in the first half. Coach, you know, your team makes 16 free throws. Um, what, what can you do about that? Is it, is it just about players stepping up, knocking down their shots, or how can you, you know, get to your players to knock down these free throws? Well, free throw shooting is, uh, is very important. We've been shooting well throughout the year. I think we're at 74% as a team before today. Isaiah Collier had been shooting a decent until last game. I know he missed uh, some against Gonzaga. Uh, but he went five for 12, and Boogie missed a couple, Kobe missed a couple, and they were very good shooters. And then if we had everybody else, it was Isaiah Sellers, Bronny missed that one at the end of the game in regulation. So some very good shooters missed free throws today, and uh, uh, it's, t it's hard. You, you put yourself in a it, – it's, it's a very uh, frustrating sequence when you keep, keep missing free shots, and uh, we missed 16 of them. Coach, Coach I have a two-part question. Assess, uh, Bronny's debut today? I thought Bronny played well. He defended at a high level. He rebounded. He had two steals, two assists, made the three. So I thought it was uh, very solid. Coach, oh, this is strange kind of game where experience in some ways and so much attention on Bronny. Do you expect that to continue or to sort of level out a little bit each time? You know, Bronny uh, handles the spotlight extremely well. You know, he's a passionate young man about playing basketball. And I'm not sure what will happen in the future as far as um, the spotlight, as you, as you said. But uh, all I know is he handles it very well. Brian you know, made some really big plays in transition, obviously on defense. What what stood out to you defensively about his game today? Well, I said he had two steals, a couple rebounds, and uh, he guarded the uh, quick ball handlers for the other team pretty well. What was the excitement of the uh, best game so far this season? How would you um, evaluate his progression through this season? So, uh, Vince, who would you? I thought Vince gave us good offense today at 15 points, six rebounds, four offensive rebounds. He's a develop he our big guys have to do a better job defensive rebounding, and uh, I was proud of him. I thought he played hard, gave us great energy. What does the excitement of today make you feel about the excitement and the spotlight that's going to be on your program moving forward? Well, this isn't how we uh, anticipated of being up 15 at halftime and losing in overtime. We had our plenty of chances. In fact, we even had the lead with the last 10 seconds, and they made a shot to tie it. Uh, and then in overtime, we went one for six and three for six from the foul line. So it's, it's not ideal. It's not an ideal way. Uh, uh, but uh, we we, uh, we did that to ourselves. And, and so uh, we have a good team. I think uh, this team is developing. And we have to get better. We have to get better in certain areas. And some of our guys off the bench have to improve. And then our starters have to do their job. And uh, tonight uh, it was frustrating because some of our better players had off nights. And how, and how, and he, how, how hard was the entire uh, absence that Ronnie went through, not only on the players, but the coaching staff, the medical staff, and then juxtapose that to the, I'm sure, the relief and the joy and anticipation you had of getting him back in the lineup? Uh, well, you, you said how hard was it? How hard was it was obviously what happened in the summertime. I think everybody's been through a lot emotionally, uh, Ronnie the most, and, and he's handled it very well. And any time you go through an emotional situation, uh, it's nice to have teammates and staff that, that care. And, and I thought the team, his teammates did a great job with, with, with Ronnie, and he's back now, and we're all excited for him. Obviously, you guys get hit with overtime, but what was the plan for Ronnie minutes-wise, and what is the plan for him going forward in a week from today? Uh, we'll, we'll continue to monitor that. That's not my decision. 
So he he played his uh, restriction tonight. It was a minutes restriction. I thought he played played well in those minutes. Do you know what that minute restriction We're was not sure. for today? It's not. Uh, he played 16. Uh, Obviously, you guys get hit with overtime. Was it supposed to be less than that? No, we did not go over. Andy, two related questions. Um, on the final possession, when you're down three in overtime, uh, why did you have Goshen instead of Vince? And then my related question is, Harry played an awful lot of minutes, but at least on the stat sheet, didn't have a big game. Uh, in reflection, should either Kajani or uh, KP play more? Uh, well, uh you can always look back at the stat sheet, and I see uh, some other guys shot poorly from the field and had a lot of turnovers. So uh, you could always go back and say, well, we should have given this guy more minutes or this person less minutes. That's, that's easy to see when you look at the stat sheet after the game. Uh, but as I said, we, uh, you know, I thought DJ Robin was playing well. He fouled out, and we had, we had 24 fouls, which is a lot. We put him on the line 40 times. So as far as one possession, you know, Josh Morgan, he's our best offensive rebounder. He's a very good offensive rebounder. Vince played, I thought, very well. Uh, but, you know, we, we, need, uh, we need consistency out of our entire roster. And, and uh, as you notice, we start changed the starting lineup tonight. And we may do it again next week. We'll see. It's, uh, there's not a lot of starters that have secured a spot right now because of our um, uh, inconsistencies on offense and defense. Going off of that, Andy, what do you see is necessary for this team to develop a little bit more uh, offensive consistency and flow than what it showed in the second half there? Well, you know, if you look at the stat sheet with the, tur the turnovers, the last three four, three games we've done extremely well, low turnovers. Uh, but the two games we lost at home, we had high turnovers and we had uh, we shot the ball very poorly. We were seven of thirty-one from the three-point line tonight. And, and then we missed 16 free throws. That's, that's really hard to win a college basketball game with those percentages, especially when you have 19 turnovers. So uh, our players understand they have to get better, and we'll go back and, and, and look at this game, and, and everybody has to do their job. The loss notwithstanding, um, what, is the, what is the opportunity for this program to showcase itself with Ronnie being here and all the eyeballs that are now drawn to USC basketball? What, I'm sorry, what is it? The loss notwithstanding, how do you feel about the, the chance to showcase this program with more eyeballs watching you all? Uh, well, look, we, we recruited Bronny James because he's a very good basketball player. And we expect him to keep developing, and now he's back on the court. He went through a very unfortunate situation, and he's done an incredible job to get back to this point. So with the extra spotlight or eyeballs, as you said, uh, sometimes that comes w with a guy like Bronny, but we have to get better as a basketball team, and he, he has to keep improving as an individual player, and that's what we fo we're, we're focused on. Uh, so we, we don't focus on uh, the amount of media that are here in this room right now. We're, we're, we're just focused on trying to get better, and I know he, when he gets in the gym, it's his safe spot with his teammates, and, and that's what he wants to do. Coach, it's obviously a very proud moment for any parent when their son or daughter plays their first game at college. Uh, for someone like LeBron, who's had a lifetime in basketball and as a parent yourself, can you imagine sort of the emotions that must have been going on for him watching the game but not being able to directly influence it? Uh, well, I, I'm not, I'm not going to speak for the James family or anybody else. I'm sure it was exciting. It was exciting for, for everybody to see him out there. And, and I'm sure his family was the most excited. Coach, the final play of regulation, you guys, I did call you your super three. Uh, was that a designated play by you, or how come uh, – it didn't go to someone like Boogie or The last play of regulation, we got Boogie on the run with 3.9 seconds left, and I don't know why he didn't take the ball to the basket, so I don't know why he passed it. It wasn't designed. It was for him, whoever got it on the run, to drive it and attack, and for whatever reason, our leading scorer passed the ball with one second left, and we didn't get a shot off. So, so uh, I'm sure he would want to have that possession back because he had, we, we threw it. We got him on the run. And the uh, play was executed perfectly, and he got the ball uh, right where he wanted to be. One last sticking question. With Boogie, sticking with Boogie, it felt like there were so many times in this game where he just put his body on the line. Outside of um, the play that you just mentioned, what did you see from him overall tonight? Well, Boogie in an off night uh, offensively. He was 4 for 14. You know, he shot an air ball in the overtime. It looked like he was tired. Uh, and so 
He still had four assists and only one turnover, two steals. But he played very hard. Boogie plays hard all the time, and he's he's a tremendous player. Everybody's allowed to have an off night, but when you have off nights from a few of your guys at the same time, a game like this can happen. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thank you.